Raycasting, what is it, how can you use it, when do you use it, how does it work? Everything explained in this video. Here is a simple example of raycasting in action. Not a very exciting example, but essentially you can detect what is under your mouse, what object is your mouse hovering over, and based on that you can do a bunch of uh, calculations and add a bunch of logic and actions and events. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to use raycasting. For example, for weapons, in this example, you can use the raycast object node, there are multiple raycast nodes, but this one is a very interesting one, because it allows you to select which object you're looking for. So we need to input the coordinates from where the raycast is going to go, so we can get the cursor location, so it's the location of your mouse on your screen, and so the raycast is going to be sent from your mouse, and it's going to look for the object we just eye dropped the cube. We also need to say from what camera we're looking from, so if you have multiple cameras in the scene I highly recommend you use the get active camera node, so it, depending on which camera you switched into in your scene, if you have multiple, it will always send it from the correct camera's perspective. Now we have a bunch of outputs, so we have a bunch of information that is sent back, either no, the object isn't under the raycast, or yes, we did collide with that object, or even get the object's location. From the recap. So what we're going to do now is we're going to grab the transform node and we're going to set the transform of the object to a random location so we can get this transform node now and also a random vector and input the maximum and minimum x axis uh, coordinates so we can't go any further out of these axes and also the y axis maximum on the top and minimum on the bottom and once those are inputted make sure you set the z axis to zero so we don't have it move around in depth and now it switches the cube around in 3d space completely randomly so that essentially is the basics of raycasting you can select objects and do a bunch of stuff but that's not a very interesting or usable uh, use case so let's talk about some more interesting ones like you know, guns, which is what raycasting is most often used for. As you've just seen, the raycasting node allows you to select which object you're looking for, but what if you're not looking for a specific object? What if you have a category of objects in your scene that are shootable, for example, or breakable? Well, you can use arrays. We can use the raycast object node with the array object socket. So we can, instead of selecting a single object, select an array of objects. So we can get the array object node and select all the different objects we want. And now we can do something like attach a remove object node and so all the objects that are selected are going to be removed alternatively a much better way of doing this is to use collections that avoids you to have to manually select which objects are to be added into that category and also allows you if you're spawning objects at runtime to have them be put into that category and be breakable so it's much more useful if you add them using collections and collections are essentially arrays so it works perfectly fine and much better in fact when using arrays to determine which object you're looking for in that category or collection more like. But obviously since our mouse is locked on our camera we're still using the same method of getting the mouse's position because the cursor's location will always be in the center because it's locked and hidden and that's perfect for an FPS game so anywhere you point as an in the middle of your screen is where you're going to shoot. And so this node setup despite looking a bit basic and stupid is actually very useful. However, there are a lot more possibilities with the Raycast Closest Object node than actually just detecting objects uh, within a collection or an array because, like the name suggests, we can actually Raycast to the closest object that is in that list. For example, if we have our array object node attached to the array objects, then that list will actually be used as a way to determine which object is closest to where we're clicking. If we click over here, this object is obviously closest, so what we're going to do is get the object's location, and the object will be the one that is closest, and uh, plug that into the transform node and spawn an object with that transform plugged in. So we're going to get the location of the closest object and spawn a different object to that one's location. And there we go, that is a great way of using approximated raycasting positions instead of just using the exact mouse coordinates. Also we have a raycast node, now this node is completely different from the other two that we just showed because this node allows you to control the beginning and the end of the raycast. Previously we've only been able to control where the raycast comes from and previously we just set it to be from the mouse coordinates. But this one means you can actually control where the raycast ends, and to do that we can actually just get the object's location. 
So by getting the object location node, we can actually eye drop whichever object we want to select, for example, object number one in this case, duplicate that node and select object number two and then plug it into the bottom. So the raycast is going to go between those two objects. We can grab an on update node, so this will happen every update. And the, what is going to happen is we're going to remove the object that collides between these two objects like a laser if you like, a raycast laser. Now this object does have physics enabled because it looks for the rigid body and there you go, it deletes the object when it hits between these two objects. But we can take this a step further. But instead of having two objects, you can actually use the raycast math node to add positions to the object. So for example, our object is currently at a value on x of minus six. So if we add like five to the vector math node, it will raycast the object from the object's location up five units on the x-axis so that's the limit to the raycast instead of the raycast going to infinity and as you can see we have a bunch of objects up here and it's going to remove all the ones it can and as you can see it's going to add five units and that's how far the raycast will go it's a great way of limiting things for things like bullets uh, so the objects don't go to infinity and that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching this very important video on Raycast. And this is extremely important for you interacting with 3D elements on screen, whether it be uh, 3D UI or buttons on screen or anything you want, or even bullets and stuff like that. That's more what's commonly used for. This is a very important video. It took me a little, a little while to make. So thank you for your patience. I'm sorry for the lousy upload schedule recently, but it's the holiday, so who cares? Once again, there are a couple of notes uh, in this video, two nodes I haven't actually covered in detail in this video because they're a little more specific to different situations such as the convex cast node which is a very specific node that I'm going to cover in a separate video on its own because it requires very specific uh, situations to be used in. Thanks for watching and I hope I'll see you again someday.